Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this unit right here. Now, if this looks very familiar, well, maybe it should, because this is very similar to the one that we previously looked at, which is over here, and these are the Chewy RZ boxes. <laughs> Now, the one that we reviewed previously was based on the Ryzen 9 4900H, but then when we published this review, Chewy reached out to me and they're like, hey, um, we actually have a new model, which is just about to come out with the Ryzen 7 5800H, and well, that's gonna be our new model, so do you wanna take a look at it? And I said, sure. And if these units look relatively similar, that's because, um, well, they actually are extraordinarily similar, except for that change. Now in the comments, they were absolutely littered in that review of basically saying, hey, why did you not say Chewy as in Chewbacca? And of course, I guess that makes sense in short, so we're gonna say Chewy makes you think of Chewbacca this time. But all that aside, let's start getting into all the big things. And the first one we're gonna talk about is price because price to me is super important when we talk about these units. Second thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna go through the hardware. Then we're gonna talk about performance, power consumption, noise, and then kind of talk about our key lessons learned. In the description, we're gonna have the title and chapter markers to all these. So if you wanna go skip, you can of course go do that. But I wanna kind of go do the, a full review of this one. I don't wanna shortchange it just because we did the previous model. Okay, so the first thing, let's talk about pricing because to me, that might be the most important one. Now you're gonna see some folks talk about the pricing on this thing, really the list pricing being something like seven or like, you know, $699 to around $700. But if you go and look on the Chewy site, you're going to see that the pricing is actually quite a bit lower than that. And they have it right now at $599. On the other hand, I just looked on Amazon and Alex who's editing this video is probably wondering like, what in the actual heck is this guy doing? Cause there's this like giant pause. I'm just looking this up. And on Amazon, there are a couple things that are interesting. First off, I think the price, the list price is like $759, but then there's a discount, which brings the total price of this thing down to $649. But there's more because there's currently an $85 promotion, which means that you can purchase this on Amazon with prime shipping, given the current pricing as of the time of recording this video. And, uh, and and it's actually less expensive than getting it on the Chewy site. So um, I don't know what to tell you guys, but you know, for the folks on our YouTube, I'm sure Chewy would rather us send you to their website, but um, I don't know how to, to tell you to go to their website and spend more than you would on Amazon if you get prime shipping too. Um, so frankly, I think we're just gonna send you there. There may be an affiliate link in the description. But one thing that I thought was actually also really interesting, and the reason is actually, uh, I noticed that one of the videos on Amazon is actually our review for the Ryzen 4000 series version of this, and nobody nobody asked if they could upload that uh, to Amazon. So that was uh, that was a shock, I just found out right now. So interesting things, uh, you know, this wouldn't necessarily, that's not the type of thing that you'd see happen with like an HP or a Dell. I would kind of expect them not to upload our video onto Amazon, um, but that was kind of strange. But so we're talking about a box that's only about $565. And frankly, with an eight core Ryzen CPU and a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, where you get the newer cores and microarchitecture, plus the fact that you get 16 gigabytes of memory, a half terabyte SSD. I mean, and you're also getting things like you, know, you get Wi-Fi, you get Bluetooth, you have dual NICs. I mean, there's a whole bunch of features in this thing. And so I actually think for that price, this is actually a pretty phenomenal bargain. There are of course some things that are a little bit funky. We're gonna get to those in a bit. Okay, looking at the hardware, we get two audio jacks on the front, which is actually pretty common, especially when we look at the Project Tiny Mini Micro one liter PCs from uh, you know various large vendors. A lot of times you'll see either one or two, you see combo jacks and all that kind of stuff. And so the fact that we have two here, I think is about what we would normally see. The other thing that you're gonna see is that we get two USB ports. Now these are USB two ports and uh, we get a type A and a type C port. To me, frankly, I wish that these things were like 3.2 gen two or something just to kind of add that extra speed. But um, that's, that's what we get. And just so you guys know, the number one thing that I've been using this front USB port for on this machine and the other one is really just for a wireless keyboard. So I have a little Logitech uh, dongle thing that I throw in there and everything works great. And it actually puts it at the front system, which is nice if you just want to make sure that you're getting range because if you put it behind, sometimes you don't get as long range. And so that's just what I've been doing with it. Okay. Now the back of this unit, super interesting as well. We get a VGA port, but we also get display port and HDMI outputs. So we get actually a ton of display outputs just because, um, and a whole bunch of different varieties, which is super interesting. A lot of times you'll you see on systems from large vendors, they only have like all display port or all, you know, maybe HDMI and display port, but you rarely see that you get all three. And so that is a little bit different and it's something kind of nice, especially if you have 
a wide diversity of monitors that you need to plug in. The other feature on the rear that you're gonna see is that we get two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. So we get another four USB ports on the rear. This actually gives you a decent number of USB ports on the system, but you don't necessarily get you know, a ton like you would on a full desktop. This is definitely being limited because it is a mini PC. Now, in terms of networking, this is an area that frankly, I just personally really wish that Chewy decided to go and upgrade along with the CPU. You're gonna see that we get two RJ45 ports, but these are one gigabit ports. A lot of the systems that we're looking at these days are using 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Even the Realtek and also the Intel i225, the three-stepping of those, they're both not that, that expensive. And maybe on a system that's a lower cost system like this, you would expect to see the Realtek NICs, but still the cost differential between one gig and two and a half gig is not that much these days, to the point that I really wish that Chewy had put them on here because just I don't know, I just think that, that would have been way better. On the other hand, if you're just running one gig ethernet and you don't have two and a half gig ethernet, then you probably don't care. And it is nice that there are two NICs on here. Plus remember that we also have Wi-Fi. Now, something else I just wanna talk about is just the design of this unit. And one of the things that you're gonna see is that this unit kind of looks almost like an industrial chassis or something like that. And it um, it has some elements that are definitely metal. The uh, top and bottom covers of these are metal. And you can actually see that uh, because we actually took this out to a park to go do some photos in Oregon, what you're gonna see here is that we actually have a little nick that you're gonna see in this because uh well we took the photos on a rocky surface and uh little scuffs happened that was not intentional but it's what happened so that's life but it does show this is actually metal because um well you can see the exposed metal uh, right here now while the top and the bottom are metal the sides and really the face plates i think these are actually plastic and so it is a little bit misleading to say this is definitely not an all metal chassis and the other thing that it looks like that this is like some kind of like heat sink design or something really cool like that but realistically they're not really using thermal transfer you know whether that's thermal pads or copper blocks or whatever to actually go and cool the components that are inside using this metal chassis so it's kind of just there for show the other thing that a lot of folks will see this and say like hey this kind of looks like an industrial piece PC, but um, it's definitely not. It's not sealed like an industrial PC would be. And you can actually see that the air inlets for the fan, you know, you can see that here. And that's just an example of like, you know, if you spill coffee on it or something, it will get inside. If you had an industrial PC, that would not happen. So it is a little bit of a difference, but I just want to make sure that because, you know, it does kind of look like one. I just want to make sure that folks know that this is not sealed like one of those would be. And finally, I just wanna talk about the rubber feet on the bottom. I actually love what Chewy does with this, with these like, kind of just giant rubber strips. There's four of them. And you know, this thing actually sits on surfaces and it just kind of sits really nicely on surfaces. I frankly really like this. I There are a lot of units that just kind of use like the little small round rubber tabs. And those units tend to, um, you know, you see those things fall off. I haven't had any issues with these on the previous gen or this gen. So I would say that this is actually kind of a nice design. But on the bottom, what you're gonna see is that we have a total of eight screws. They're filled Head screws. And if you take those Phillips head screws out, you can actually get inside the system. So next, let's go look at our internal hardware overview so we can talk about what's inside the system. Okay, the first thing that's inside the system is, well, let's talk about the processor. The processor is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H. Now, the previous generation was the Ryzen 9, but it's a 4900H. The basic difference is, of course, the fact that we are moving up to the Zen 3 architecture, and that gives us, I guess, more performance. We get the unified cache, we get a newer microarchitecture, and a lot of folks just kind of just say it's just the cache, but there were actually architectural changes that were made between the two generations. For example, um, you know, the BMI2 instruction uh, implementation in Zen 3 is just much faster than it was in previous generations, and so there are actually some instructions that execute much faster on Zen 3, and that's why overall we get more performance. We're gonna talk more about that in our performance section. Now, once you unscrew the bottom cover, you're also gonna see the user serviceable bits of the overall system. And what you can see is that we basically get two SODIMM slots for our DDR4 memory, and then we get two M.2 slots for our storage. Now, this unit came installed with 16 gigabytes of memory, and this is a 16 gigabyte SODIMM, which means that it is running in single channel memory mode. I implore anybody who uses APU or the Intel integrated iGPU, like if you're using an integrated GPU, you definitely want dual channel memory for the best performance, especially if you are using that GPU. So that is one area that we are testing it using the configuration it came with, with 16 gigabytes and a half terabyte SSD. But this is one area I would tell 
everybody to go and add a second 16 gig DIMM to get up to 32 gigs and get that dual channel memory. Frankly, in the system, it's super easy. All you need to do is just undo those eight screws. And then you just basically plug these two into the SO DIMM slots that are looking at you right there. And since you can't see the label when this is installed, the other thing I just want to point out is that both the SO DIMM as well as the SSD are from a company called BWIN. We are seeing some of the other systems that are kind of in these like kind of mini PC class that we've been reviewing using things like Kingston or Crucial Memory or things like that, just to kind of have like a kind of bigger brand behind them. But at the same time, this is one of the lowest cost systems. So the fact that they aren't using necessarily the biggest vendor or anything like that, I think kind of makes sense. I think that frankly, these are about a little step up from some of the, you know, like Shiji SSDs and stuff that we see on like the little router and firewall embedded boxes from AliExpress. So this is definitely maybe like one step up, but it's probably not necessarily the entire jump up to the like, you know, Kingston and Micron or Crucial level. In terms of the SSD, our BWIN SSD is a 512 gig model, which is pretty darn good. And the fact is that you can have, you know, SATA, you can have NVMe, and you can also expand these things. So if you want to go put a multi terabyte SSD in there, you totally can. And also if you want to put a second SSD in there to have two drives, you can do that. So you can actually have eight cores, 16 threads, but then also have two SSDs. You can easily go put, you know, 32 gigs or 64 gigs of memory. And you can also have a, you know, dual one gigabit ethernet connection. I mean, there are definitely a lot of expansion capabilities in a system like this. It's not super expensive. So, um, you know, that, I think that is really the big plus. Now, while these are the components that you really are most likely to go service, right? The SO DIMMs and also the M.2 SSDs. There are other things that I wish that were here. And one example of that is like the Wi-Fi card. This uses the AMD RZ608 Wi-Fi solution. Now, what this basically is, is this is the joint AMD and MediaTek unit. And that is, um, you know, frankly, MediaTek NICs are about a step down from the Intel AX2000 series. But of course, the 608 or RZ608 supports Wi-Fi 6E. And so that's a little difference. It is nice that you get that on here, but at the same time, the support for Intel NICs is just much better than AMD at this point. That may change in the future. And, you know, frankly, if you're in Windows or something like that, it's not that much of, it's not like a huge deal. But on the other hand, I do wish that you had Intel just because um, those drivers are just better supported in more OSs. So overall, the hardware of the system is very similar to the previous gen, but let's talk about performance because I think that's where really some of the gaps open up. Okay, so let's talk about the performance aspects of this. And there are definitely some things to unpack here. And the biggest one is just the fact that really we still have the Vega 8 graphics. So we aren't getting like the new generation of, in, of AMD graphics. And so hopefully that is something that we get in future generations, but this is really gonna be pretty similar on the GPU side to the previous gen. But the big difference though is really the CPU side. Now, what we're gonna just do is just flash up some charts here. And what you're gonna see is that on the CPU side, we get anywhere from maybe about five, 10% performance bump up to you know, maybe about that 15 to 20%. So it kind of depends on what type of workload you're running. You can actually go run very specific instructions that I mentioned earlier, like with BMI2, that are significantly faster with Zen 3. And also if there are things that are super optimized for the cache sizes that you get with Zen 3 and the, and the partitioning that you get with Zen 3, you know, this is something that you definitely get um, better with the new generation. But on the other hand, just in general, you can think of this as an upgrade. So for a lot of folks, they're going to see, hey, there's like one that was like a Ryzen 9 that was, you know, that, and that was like 4900H. Is that better than the 5800H that's only a Ryzen 7 in this generation? To me personally, I would say that the Ryzen 7 5800H is the one that I would personally want to have. And just, just because it's a newer chip and it is better. And I will just note that we do our testing at default power. You can actually raise the power up the, to like 54 watts TDP. We didn't do that just because, um, well, frankly, I thought you know, raising it. Most people aren't going to go into the BIOS and actually go do that. So, and I just want to make sure that you're aware that we are doing this at default. Now, in terms of the SSD, the SSD performance was good. It wasn't anything necessarily great. And compared to a lot of the higher end PCIe Gen 4 SSDs that we see these days, this is just not nothing to get like super excited about. But on the other hand, we have to remember that this is a very low cost device uh, in terms of the overall system. And so, you know, frankly, I think this is okay. So that's the performance, but let's talk about power consumption and noise, because I'm sure that's what you want to see next. Okay, so let's talk about power consumption. And my thought here is we're gonna use our little setup that we've been using in the last couple of videos. And let's go look at like how much power this thing's actually using. Now, this system is currently sitting just off camera over here in the Windows 11 home desktop, just 
idling. And you're gonna see that the idle that's kind of on the side over here that is basically showing somewhere in maybe the 11 to maybe about 13 watts in terms of overall idle power consumption, which is pretty okay, frankly, but it's not necessarily top bin. We have seen a couple systems go a little bit lower in that really 10 to 11 watt range. Still, this is pretty darn good. And the microphone, by the way, is like right here. Uh, and what I wanna do is just kind of share with you how this thing sounds at idle, it's um, it's so quiet, I can barely even hear it this close to my ear, but I'll put it up there so you guys can hopefully hear it. That is barely registering on the sound meter. And so now what we're actually doing is we're actually running and using remote desktop to do this, but running the YouTube video of the previous Ryzen 9 4000 series version of this. And you can see that power consumption has definitely gone up. Still, we're only talking about maybe 18 to 20 watts or something like that. So overall, that's actually not too bad for adding you know, a video or watching video and doing that video decode. That's actually pretty reasonable. Now, something I do wanna note is just the fact that this does not actually have the HDMI uh, you know, hooked up. It doesn't have the NICs hooked up and it doesn't also have a key keyboard or mouse. So just remember when we're doing these power consumption numbers that this is literally just the unit we're connecting via remote desktop over Wi-Fi. So this is kind of like the absolute kind of minimum. You would add a couple of watts for all of that in all these numbers. And you can see that right now we're hitting about that 25 or so watts and I'm gonna bring this up here. Again, that's pretty darn quiet. Okay, but that was really good at just kind of like the idle and just kind of basic web browsing. Let's go and heat this thing up and see how much we can get it to move. So now what we're doing is we're running Geekbench 5 and we're running really the single threaded benchmarks on the CPU test. And you're gonna see that we definitely get more power consumption now. You're gonna see that those single threaded workloads are really hitting maybe into that like mid thirties, kind of at the max, maybe up to maybe 40 or something. And here's what the, the overall noise sounds like using this thing. I'll just leave this up there for a sec or two. We're still in the single thread. You can definitely hear it, but it's not too, too bad. But what we're gonna do pretty soon is we're gonna get into the multi-threaded benchmarks. And now what you can see is that we're pretty much in that like 65 to 70 watt range. And let's kind of listen to it now. Now, what I will say about this unit is that you only saw that we got to maybe like that just under 70 watt range. But if you do go and you know, you're running games or something like that, you can get this thing to go over 80 watts. I think the maximum that we saw was around 81, 82 watts. So overall, the power consumption was definitely not too, too bad, but it wasn't necessarily like, this is not like a 35 watt machine or something like that. And if you are running, especially in that like 70 plus watt range in terms of system power consumption, because you're using the CPU so much, that fan spins up. And I really wish, again, Again, that this is something that the Chewy folks look at is just putting a bigger heatsink and fan unit in there because frankly, I just kind of think that that would help keep the noise down even that little bit more. Overall, it's not too obnoxious, especially if you're mostly at idle. But on the other hand, I do wish that, that they just did a little bit more work to kind of keep this thing a little bit quieter and keep the overall noise floor just a little bit lower, especially when you are using the GPU and getting to the higher end workloads. Still, these numbers again, were in line with what we really saw with the Ryzen 4000 series version of this. So overall, I can't say it's much better or worse. It's actually just kind of similar. Okay, and now we're back and I wanna to get to the key lessons learned because frankly to me, um, well, there are a couple things that definitely stuck out testing this unit versus the previous gen and maybe just testing those and all the other ones that we've done as part of our STH mini PC series, but also our Project Tiny Mini Micro series. Now at $565, which is the current Amazon pricing, I, I mean, it's pretty hard to beat this thing in the market. This is definitely less expensive than most of the Tiny Mini Micro nodes, especially with an eight core AMD APU. I mean, that's absolutely awesome. And this is a pretty high-end APU. It's not necessarily the fit, like 5900HX or something like that, but it still is a pretty darn high-end APU. And so for the price, I think this is just awesome. I do wish though that the Chewy guys decided to do a little bit of upgrading. Specifically, I think that like, you know, a really good example, let's let's just talk about these two, these, you know, two one gig ethernet ports. I feel like those really should have been two and a half gig ethernet in this generation. It just kind of feels like, you know, this, this was all they did was they just said, okay, we're literally gonna take the exact same system and we're just gonna go swap out the CPU to a newer generation. And that's literally what I feel like this was. I feel like there was probably a couple of just like little things like adding those, you know, newer NICs, maybe up, upgrading some of the USB or something like that. I feel like there were just a couple of opportunities that were really missed in this generation that, you know, were 
not necessarily present or were present in the previous gen, but just kind of feels like it should have been upgraded. But there is one other item that I would have really liked to have seen upgraded, and that's frankly the Windows. Now this one actually came with Windows 11, and as you're installing it, just a quick tip, if you do want to use a local account, remember that you have to go and not have it connected to the network, so you have to disconnect any network things, and then you can actually go and set up an on offline account because this is Windows Home, and it is an absolute pain in the butt. I do wish that this came with Windows 11 Pro instead of Home. For, you know, if you're going out and you're gonna go buy a key on like Amazon or something like that, you're gonna spend a lot of money, frankly, for Pro versus Home, and if you do it on the Microsoft Store, you're gonna spend a ton of money to go upgrade to Pro. On the other hand, um, you know, frankly, if you're getting it as an OEM and like, you know, the Chewy guys are probably getting these things that these licenses and the difference between the home and pro license is probably a very low number of dollars. I really wish that that would have been passed on into the system. It would have increased prices probably by, you know, a couple dollars and that totally makes sense to me. But on the other hand, it would have made it just a little bit more of a premium product. And if you had this, say, set up as a second PC, maybe it was uh, set up you know, on your TV or something like that, you may wanna go and have the ability to remote into it without having to actually go walk over the TV and annoy whoever's maybe watching TV to just go and play with the thing, right? So maybe you want remote desktop. Well, if you have Windows 11 Pro, you can just set up a remote desktop and Microsoft RDP and everything works really easily. Now, there are other solutions. You can get things like TeamViewer, Chrome Remote Desktop, I and mean, there are tons of different options that you can use with Home, but frankly, it's just not as is good, especially if you're in a, a LAN environment as RDP. And so it is just one of those little things that I wish that this had. Also, there are features like for, you know, joining AD domains and all that kind of stuff that I just kind of feel like, especially if this is gonna be a second PC, would be really nice to have Pro and at only a couple dollars increase in price. I really feel like that that is a missed opportunity. Overall though, if you think about what my feedback is on this, I have to say that most of my feedback is frankly just little things that I would add that would probably add cost as well. I mean, adding new USB, adding, better ethernet controllers, adding different Wi-Fi solutions, even though AMD is really kind of working on the bundling there, you know, adding things like Windows 11 Pro. These are all things that I just kind of wish that there was like maybe a, a just higher end model, like a slightly higher end model. I, on the other hand, I don't think that that would add like crazy amount of cost. So just personally, I would have liked to have seen that done. On the other hand, I can totally understand what Chewy is doing here, just kind of creating a low cost system with a lot of base capabilities. So in summary, we've tested out two boxes that are virtually the same other than the CPU. And frankly, um, I have to say, I actually kind of like these little boxes. They have definitely grown on me over the last couple of months. And I think that the upgrade to the new Ryzen 5000 series is definitely a great one for Chewy to go do. And so I'm very happy that we have a new option. And frankly, at the price, I mean, these things are really good solutions at that kind of low price point. I mean, if this is something that would fit your needs, then frankly, this is a really good option. And hey, I hope you like this second iteration of our Chewy RZ box review because, well, it's uh, probably the last time we're gonna do this exact system review because hopefully they're gonna have a new one for the next gen Ryzen systems. Maybe they'll even have an Intel Alder Lake system that'll come out at some point. That would be super cool. And I just kind of hope that we get to go review something that's a little different because uh, just the CPU upgrade was not that big of a difference. At the same time, a very good difference, but still we have lots of these systems coming up on the STH mini PC series. And we are gonna be picking up Project Tiny Mini Micro starting with the Alder Lake generation. Pretty darn soon, so we got a lot of these mini PCs coming. And hey, if you did like this review, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, have an awesome day.